Funerals. Burying the dead. The final goodbye. It's something that's been consistent with every culture in the world for nearly all of human history. Wherever cultures differed in discovery of science, mathematics, or goods, they all had one thing in common. Burying the dead. But when was the first actual human burial? Well, burial practices go way back. Most people think of ancient Egypt around 5000 BC as being the oldest example. Nope. Think older. Mesopotamia in the Fertile Crescent around 10,000 BC? Mmm, no. Think way older. Try the Paleolithic period or the Stone Age. The time of Neanderthals, stone tools, bipedalism, and of course Homo sapiens. Don't worry we didn't forget about you, Homo habilis. It's true, burial practices go as far back as the Paleolithic period, which lasted from 3.3 million BC to 15,000 BC. There have been several archaeological discoveries from this period that were believed to be the first burial in history. However, there were issues in defining what was a legitimate intended burial and what was just a caveman skeleton that happened to be found under dirt. It's obvious this caveman was buried because, well, he's underground. I'll take my Nobel Prize now. Uh, sir, this is a cemetery. In order for the burial to be plausible, there had to be proof that the body was buried intentionally. Reasons for burial during the Stone Age may have been to remove the odor of a rotting corpse or to lure away predators, but what anthropologists are looking for is a burial that showed a purpose with higher reasoning, and not just a disposal site for decaying corpses. If artifacts were present with the remains, it would build the case that it was an intentional burial that had some kind of cultural, emotional, or spiritual connection. However, artifacts had to be taken with initial skepticism, as they can be misleading as was with the infamous flower burial site in Iraq. In 1960, French archaeologists found what was believed to be a Neanderthal burial site in Shanidar Cave, Iraq, dating between 65,000 and 35,000 BC. The site was famously called the Flower Burial Site because clumps of pollen were found in the grave. Archaeologists believe the pollen was from local flowers near the cave and that Neanderthal relatives placed the flowers there. The discovery was groundbreaking because it showed that Neanderthals were capable of abstract thought and understanding beauty. Um, we have a lay problem. It was later discovered that the pollen had been brought in by mice that were burrowing in the grave and had inadvertently brought in pollen from the local vegetation. Archaeologists have pinpointed three different occurrences during the Middle Paleolithic era between 400,000 BC and 50,000 BC, where the first burial in history is believed to have taken place. The first burial site in Atapuerca, Spain is called the Pit of Bones. It was believed to have taken place around 400,000 BC. This site was not a conventional burial like most people would think. It was in a cave. In 1997, while construction workers were building a rail line through a hill, a cave structure was accidentally discovered. Archaeologists explored the cave and found a 43-foot vertical drop followed by a 40-foot long descending ramp. It was at the bottom of the pit that archaeologists found over 6,500 bone fragments, specifically of bears, wildcats, wolves, foxes, and 28 hominins, called Homo denisova, a subspecies that split off from Homo heidelbergensis. Initially, it was believed the denisova bones were brought there by cave-dwelling carnivores. However, this theory was quickly disproven because the pit had only one entrance and exit, a steep vertical shaft, and once you were in, there was no way getting out. Also, the Denisovo bones were beneath the carnivore bones, meaning they had been there before the carnivores, and had little to no nomarchs. This led scientists to believe that the Denisovan individuals were placed there. There were no signs of a flood that could have carried them in, and no indication of a collapse that would have trapped them. The only other explanation is that the remains were placed there intentionally, after death. As for the carnivore bones, it's believed they were lured into the cave due to the smell of fresh meat, ventured in, and couldn't get out. Rinse and repeat. Several theories have been put forward as to why the hominin bones were there. One is the cave was used as a disposal site for diseased corpses after a deadly disease ravaged a community. This would be astounding as the Denisova would have been able to comprehend the connection of diseased remains and transmission of sickness. But this is not widely accepted. Another is they were placed there to lure away predators or to remove the stench of rotting corpses. Whatever the reason, scientists don't have enough evidence to conclusively prove it was intentional or accidental. The Pit of Bones discovery is the first and oldest disputed burial site, but is not believed to be a true burial by modern definition due to lack of intention. The second burial site, the Rising Star Cave, was found by two recreational cave climbers in the Gauteng province in South Africa from around 250,000 BC. 
It housed the bones of the extinct hominin Homo naladi, a newly discovered hominid that is believed to have preceded Homo antecessor. The cave has two very narrow passages covered in complete darkness. The first passage, called the Superman's Crawl, and the second, the Dragon's Back, both of which are less than one foot thick. The two passages lead to a large opening where the remains were found, called the Denality Chamber. The remains consisted of 15 hominins, ranging from adults to infants, and were placed there gradually over time. Unlike the Pit of Bones, there were no remains of predators, and no sign of a cave-in or floodwaters that could have carried the remains there. Paleoanthropologists have theorized that because the remains were placed there over time, and the conditions to live there were uninhabitable, that the Denality Chamber was used as a disposal site for the deceased. Though the discovery showed ritualistic behavior, paleoanthropologists are not in agreement that the Rising Star Cave is a definite burial, as there is no indication it was used as a site of remembrance or higher understanding of death. Some theorize they were placed there to remove decaying bodies from a settlement, prevent the remains from being eaten by scavengers, or to remove the presence of dead relatives due to grief. The third site, Kavaza Cave in Mount Precipice in Israel, dates back to roughly 92,000 BC. In the cave, there were 15 skeletal remains of 7 adults and 8 children, of very early archaic Homo sapiens. Additional items at the site included flint tools, seashells, and lumps of red clay called red ochre. There were major differences at the site that were not present in the previous two. Firstly, 6 of the 15 remains were buried in an orderly fashion in the cave floor, and not just deposited wherever. Two of the skeletons were buried with deer horns in their hands, adding an element of symbolism. Finally, the most striking and important feature was some bones were coated with the red ochre clay, possibly used as a religious or spiritual preparation for burial. The red ochre clay was also famously used in cave paintings, which are dated around 44,000 BC, some 48,000 years after this burial occurred. This discovery was groundbreaking, as it showed Homo sapiens as early as 92,000 BC were capable of abstract and symbolic thought when dealing with death. Later archaeological digs found that as time progressed from 92,000 BC to 25,000 BC, there was a substantial increase in use of red ochre and more elaborate symbolism in Paleolithic culture, such as cave paintings and Venus figurines. This behavior follows in parallel up to the Neolithic Revolution. As time progressed, Homo sapiens were becoming less nomadic, and adjusting to a more stationary lifestyle, where they began to build communities, harvesting food, and domesticating plants. This settlement lifestyle would have coincided with other aspects of permanent living, such as burying the dead nearby for remembrance. Additionally, communal practices and ideas would be shared among members. This timeline fits well with the progress of human societal development, as it shows a consistent increase in abstract thinking in human psychology, moving from the early symbolism in 100,000 BC to more elaborate burials in 25,000 BC, leading up to the well-known funeral rituals of the ancient Egyptians in 5,000 BC.